Skill practice five is asking us to repeat example five with a different weight for an SUV and a different angle of inclination for the hill. The first thing we want to find is the force vector that represents the weight of the truck through a single tire, not all four, just one. And we want to write the force vector in terms of I and J, assuming that the weight of the truck is evenly distributed among all four tires. Let's first draw a picture of this to get an idea of what we're talking about here. Here we have the truck on the hill, and we're going to take that one force vector that is directly down, and we're going to decompose it into two different vectors vector F1 and vector F2, one that is parallel to the hill and one that is orthogonal to the vector that is parallel to the hill. We want to identify the vector that is parallel to the hill as our vector F1 because that is the one that we're going to calculate the projection of. So the green arrow that we have is going to be the vector F1 and the blue vector is going to be the vector F2 that is orthogonal to vector F1. The black arrow is the overall vector f that is found by calculating the sum of vector f1 plus vector f2 or decomposed into vectors f1 and vector f2. That force vector that is directly down from the truck weighing 1,400 pounds, we want to know about one tire, not all four tires. So we need to divide that 1,400 pounds by four to get an individual weight per tire. And in addition, the force vector is directly down, so it's going to be a negative. 1,400 divided by four is 350 pounds, which means that the force vector is going to be negative 350 in the vertical direction down, which is the J component only. The force vector F is then equal to negative 350 J. For part B, we're going to define the vector that is in the direction of the hill as the unit vector U, and we are going to calculate the unit vector U using the magnitude of U times the cosine of theta i plus the magnitude of u times the sine of theta j. We do this so that we can calculate the projection of vector f onto vector u so that we can decompose these vectors. The vector f1 is then equal to the projection of vector f onto vector u. Recalling that this is calculated by taking the dot product of vector f times vector u divided by the magnitude of vector u squared times the vector u. Recall that I mentioned we are using the unit vector u, which means that because it is the unit vector, it has a magnitude of one for one unit. The unit vector u is then given by taking the magnitude, which is one, times the cosine of theta, which is 12 degrees i, plus the magnitude of u, which is 1, times the sine of theta, which is 12 degrees j. Vector u is then equal to 0.9781i plus 0.2079j. Now what we need to do is find the dot product of vector f and vector u which means that we are multiplying the A components times the B components and summing them together. 
we're going to divide that by the magnitude of vector u squared, which is 1 squared, and then we're going to multiply that by the vector u in component form, which would be 0 0.9781,0.2079, which you see here. Vector f1 is then given by the dot product of vector f times vector u. Well, recall we got vector f in part a, which is written as just negative 350j. Written in component form, there is no i value. So we're going to have 0 comma negative 350 in component form for vector f. Vector f1 is then given by the dot product, which is 0 times 0 0.9781 plus negative 350 times 0 0.2079 divided by the magnitude of vector u squared, which is 1 squared. All of that is going to be multiplied by the vector u, which is 0 0.9781 comma 0 0.2079. Simplifying the dot product, vector f1 is then equal to negative 72.765 times vector u, which is 0.9781 comma 0 0.2079. Vector f1 is then found by computing the scalar multiplication of the vector times negative 72.765. That gives us negative 71.2 comma negative 15.1. Writing that in terms of i and j, we get that vector f1 is equal to negative 71.2i minus 15.1j. Part C asks us to find the magnitude of the force required by the brakes on each wheel to keep the truck from rolling down the hill. In order to calculate the magnitude of the force, we need to find first the force that is required by the brakes on each wheel to keep the truck from rolling down the hill. And notice that the F1 vector is to the left. In order to keep the truck from rolling, the brakes are going to be acting in the opposite direction. So we need to calculate the opposite of vector F1. The opposite of vector F1 is found by taking vector F1 and making it negative. So we then have negative, negative 71.2i minus 15.1j. Distributing the negative, we get that the opposite of vector f1 is equal to 71.2i plus 15.1j, which we can then find the magnitude of. We square root the square of each component summed together. We have the square root of 71.2 squared plus 15.1 squared, which is approximately 72.8 pounds. This question asks us to find the work done by the force vector f equal to 2i plus 7j in newtons that is required to move an object in a straight line from point A to point B. And we need to assume that the units in the coordinate planes are in meters. So our final answer is going to be in newton meters. Calculating the displacement vector from point A to point B is found by taking the difference between the A components and the B components. This means we're calculating the terminal point minus the initial point, and point B is the terminal point, and point A is the initial point. We're going to have 9 minus negative 1i plus 11 minus 5j for the displacement vector. And the displacement vector is then 10i plus 6j. The work is calculated by taking the force vector times the displacement vector. Therefore, we are calculating the dot product of vector f times vector d, which means we're taking the product of the a components plus the product of the b components and summing it together to get a scalar value. We then have 2 times 10 plus 7 times 6. This is equal to 20 plus 42, which is 62. Therefore, the work is 62 newton meters. Finally, we are asked in Skill Practice 7 to calculate work done when a dog pulls a sled 200 feet across a yard on a horizontal path, exerting a constant force 25 pounds directed 15 degrees upward from the horizontal in foot-pounds. 
Since our force is not in the direction of motion, which is horizontal, we need to use a different formula for work. So we're going to use the fact that work is equal to the magnitude of the force vector times the magnitude of the displacement vector times the cosine of that angle theta in order to find the work done on this problem. We know that the force vector has a magnitude of 25 pounds, and we also know that the displacement vector is 200 feet horizontally, and the angle is 15 degrees connecting the two. Again, we're using the fact that work is calculated by taking the magnitude of the force vector times the magnitude of the displacement vector times the cosine of that angle theta. Work is then equal to 25 pounds times 200 feet times the cosine of 15 degrees. Using my calculator in degree mode, rounding to the nearest foot pound, I get that the work is then equal to 4,830 foot pounds.